I have deep, deep gratitude and respect to Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. That's my background, and that's what I learned, that's what I've practiced forever. Um, but in a way, Raja Vinyasa is just another name for what I've been doing all along, for a long, long time. And um, the concept of making yoga accessible and available to everybody. And this is simply the evolution of something that I've been doing for about 35 years. And yoga therapy to me is the foundation. And um, without pain-free bodies, without the ability to practice in a way that's wholesome and healthy and doesn't create repetitive injury, we lose our asana practice, especially as we get a little older and we start to experience some of the symptoms of aging. So everyone, in my opinion, should have their own approach to yoga therapy that, that addresses the needs in their body. And these are not new things that I'm saying, they're things that I've said for years. Um, but the concept of Sankhya philosophy and the gunas and the elements and the prakriti, all of this plays a big role in, in my thinking about yoga. Um, if you don't know Sankhya, you should learn it because it's kind of the foundation of all of it. It is the oldest school of Indian philosophy and it, so many things start to make more sense after we look into Sankhya. Um, we, we, we get more of the jokes, let's say. There's so many innuendos, there's so many references and cross-references in yoga philosophy, and without Sankhya, we just really don't have a clue. So, according to your prakriti, according to your constitution, according to what's going on in your body, you should practice movements that heal you. And those are not going to be the same as for everybody else. What I usually do in my classes is just teach a sequence of therapeutic movements, some of which I'm hoping will be the right ones for you. And over time, you get a wider variety of movements and begin to put those together in a way that works for you. So it's like a salad bar. I'm just reeling out the salad bar saying, well, here's this, here's this, here's this. Try it, check it out, and see. After yoga therapy, which to me is a little bit like Thomas Kuna. Now, Thomas Kuna kind of has a bad rap and people often refer to it in a very negative way, but it's an essential part of life and we're all dealing with all of the three gunas at, at, at various times. So, don't worry if, if you lean towards yoga therapy, that doesn't mean that you're always in Thomas Kuna. It just means that you're working on the very foundations of your physical body. And if that's where we're at, that's where we're at. I spend lots of time there. So, um, but asana practice and, and the movement, the energy of vinyasa, to me, is not the same thing as therapy, and, and I feel like some, some approaches to yoga, which I've tried, um, integrate so much of the therapy that it inhibits the flow of movement and the, the really energetic, concentrated state that arises from asana practice, for me, is impeded by a lot of intellectual analyzation of muscles and movements and alignments and bones and all of these things. I would prefer to keep those two things separate. So while yoga therapy has infinite possibilities and draws from anything and everything, all kinds of movement and body work, etc. Asana practice, and particularly vinyasa, is based on Surya Namaskar and the oldest elements of modern yoga, and it should be put together in a particular way. So I think that it's important to have absolute freedom and it's important to have structure. And people sometimes get tired of repeating the same thing. But I know that, you know, over 35 years of teaching Ashtanga Yoga, I've had people say to me, look, I'm tired of doing this, I don't want to do it again. Well, repetitive movement is important in every school of yoga and every school of physical culture, in fact. If you don't repeat it, it doesn't get perfect. And it doesn't get, it doesn't get smooth, it doesn't get clear, it doesn't get that look 
and feel that something has when we've repeated it over and over again for a long, long time. So that is the point of Surya Namaskar and the point of Vinyasa. It's a particular arrangement and it works together to move in a certain direction. So I like it free. I have tried a million different kinds of yoga and a million different sequences. Some of them I think are rubbish. Some of them I think are really brilliant and the creativity of the international yoga community is off the chart. So without staying in asana too long, I just want to mention a little bit about the other side of yoga, which is meditation, pranayama, the philosophy, the internal changes which happen and which aren't necessarily noticeable on the outside, but when we practice asana, we get into trance-like states. Certain things happen. All athletes know about this. Um, all yoga, uh, all exercise, not just yoga, makes us feel good and we occasionally drop into trance states and have extraordinary moments in our particular discipline, whatever it might be. Now, yoga, unlike other forms of exercise, really has the technology and tools and methodology to take those trance states and go much deeper into it. So, without pranayama, and, which is really the bridge between the physical practices into the more internal practices, without that, I feel like we miss the off-ramp and we just sort of stay with asana forever. And um, as time passes and years pass, we find ourselves not as good at asana and losing interest and, and enthusiasm with our yoga practice. So yoga, I firmly believe, accommodates people through all stages of life, all stages of physical fitness, and that there's something there if you have the tools to use it. And, and if, if you have the instruction and the right approach, yoga can create a beautiful part of anyone's life. So, as an aging yogi myself, I can say that some days I feel like I'm 90 years old and I have to practice very gently. Other days I feel like I'm 17 and I can do everything and I'm energetic and full of energy. So, learning to practice and to create a, 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 an approach to the practice that's really comfortable for me. And um, as my dear teacher, Cliff Barber, said to me years ago, he says, look, when you teach, don't worry about what anybody else is doing or what anybody else says. You teach what you practice. So in, in teaching Raja Vinyasa, that's really what I'm doing. Why is it Raja Vinyasa? Because Hatha Yoga should lead to Raja Yoga. It's, it's yoga with the aim of going deeper into yoga and not just staying with asana. And it's also honoring the kings of Mysore who are in fact the ones who gave us this yoga. They're the unsung heroes of yoga. And it wasn't just Nalwadi Krishnarajwadiyar who hired Krishnamacharya and put this out into the community of Mysore, which later spread to the world but the one before him also did a lot with yoga and before that. So there, there's really a lineage of kings who revered yoga, practiced yoga, and cultivated in their community in Mysore. And in many ways, we have them to think. And if the kings weren't practicing Raja Yoga, then what were they practicing? It's gotta be about Raja Yoga. And in my view, yoga just helps us to get in touch with the king or queen inside of us. That's my fundamental view. Practicing asanas makes you feel so good. And in, at moments you do feel like a king or a queen, but it also stirs up all of your dark stuff too, and you have to deal with that. So yoga, long-term, for me, is about finding something bright and beautiful inside and merging with it getting into the best, brightest place possible and trying to stay there. And all the practices, asanas, yamas and yayamas, 
all the different yoga ideologies and philosophies are aimed at helping a person to navigate the inevitable difficulties of life and helping us to stay in a bright, beautiful place and really become a king or a queen in our own life and inside of